friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming my monthly series. It's my February anti-haul, so if you guys are interested in talking trash about all things around in my last month, then just keep watching. If you guys aren't in my channel, welcome. My name is Karen Harris. I like to film tan girl friendly and makeup videos here on YouTube. I do post quite often, so highly recommend subscribing, turning on that bell so you're notified every time I post. And if you could do me one more favor, watch this video all the way to the end. It really helps me out. It's a free way to support my channel without buying anything, which is the reason we're all here today. So if you could do that for me, I would really appreciate it. Without further blabbering, let's get into it. Okay, so I want to talk to you guys just a little bit. Yes, I do buy a lot of makeup on my channel. It's my job slash my hobby. So I love it. But this year, I'm trying to be better. I'm not trying to say I'm on a low buy or a no buy. I just try to take it day by day, try to make the best decisions for me on a daily basis. It's like being on a diet, but we're trying not to buy makeup all the time. There's definitely stuff I pick up to feature on my channel because I do love to test stuff out. That's a big part of it. But I am saving for a trip. And I need some new clothes because I haven't done anything like super formal in a while. So I've been shopping in other parts of my life. And I'm not going to lie, I did just film this look and it was new makeup. So I don't always do my best to promote like minimalism by any means. But this video, I feel like most of us can enjoy guilt-free because it's a fun way to roast some makeup that we didn't buy and there was a lot of palettes you guys in February that I didn't buy so I'm very proud of myself I can't wait to talk about them so I'm gonna slide over so we can put up some pictures and just chat okay so let's start off with something that is super cute I definitely would buy this but I also don't need it so I didn't buy it I also might be getting it in PR but I don't have it so I shouldn't just assume that it's coming if I got this in PR, of course I would play with it, but I'm not going to go out of my way to find this. So this is the new collaboration between Hard Candy and the Girl Scouts, and I honestly think this is really cute. So we have three eyeshadow palettes based off of their famous cookies. We've got Thin Mint, Coconut Caramel, which is my personal favorite. Let me know down in the comments, are you a fan? Of Girl Scout cookies and what is your favorite and then tr trefoil trefoil I don't know I've never had either of those I don't well no I think I've had thin mints but coconut caramel is my fave so we have three palettes that are apparently cookie scented oh my gosh for ten dollars with mattes shimmering pearls metallics and glittery finishes we've got the sweet treat lip repair oils those are fun. There's like a green, a purple, and a blue. So very, very cute. We got the Get Ready Plush Headband. Loki, if I didn't already have like five plush headbands, I would totally get that if I saw it at Walmart. Cookie Batter Indulgent Volumizing Mascara in Dark Chocolate. And we've got a lip marker in the same three flavors. Cookie Icing Face Highlighter, also in Coconut Caramel and Trifoil. And then we have a Refresh Mint Canvas Primer. So, these are fun. We also have a Powder Puff. We've got a Nail Sticker Set. So, lots of cool things. I definitely think this is adorable. I think it's so fun for the drugstore. I mean, a lot of indie brands do these like IP type collabs. And I know a lot of people that watch YouTube are kind of sick of the IPs, but if you just think about like your regular person shopping at like Walmart, it's not like there's a ton of IP. I know the last time I was at Walmart, I saw like the Jurassic Park and Profusion collection. So that was there. And then the Revolution section usually had like a little bit of like Finding Nemo, but it wasn't anything too wild and crazy. So I think this will be super duper cute at the drugstore. Next thing I almost bought like to the point where I had put in my payment information and then I'm like, Karen, 
you don't have time why are you buying more things because what I found and you think I learned this lesson sooner and I'm not saying that I have or that I'm gonna stop buying things but what ends up happening to me a lot of the time is first of all my kids decide when they want to nap which you know as they're getting older is like harder and harder like it's Thursday when I'm filming this and this is only their second day of the week taking a nap so my schedule is very much like up in the air I usually film when they nap or when my babysitter is here but sometimes I have so much other stuff to take care of that I even have to like sacrifice my babysitter time to just like do the laundry or like put away all the laundry because it gets wild and crazy so anyway all that aside I keep buying stuff that I really shouldn't be buying because I have other things I want to spend my money on and then I buy it and then I get something in PR and I'm like oh but my audience probably wants to see this really cool palette and then I just get into this really bad cycle of where I'm always trying to play catch up now, do you guys care about this? Probably not, but this is what happens to me. And even though not everyone out there that watches this video is a content creator, I know this happens to you guys as well because I'm in Facebook groups and literally just, I think this weekend I saw somebody had posted saying she feels so bad about all the palettes in her collection that she's never used. And, you know, some people feel like during the pandemic, they really overbought the makeup, which I feel like we're seeing now, it's like definitely slowed down, which I'm genuinely happy for, for people. But also like, if it makes you happy, like, whatever. Because like literally yesterday, my husband bought like a whole gaming console. So like, should we really feel bad? you know it's just everybody has their hobbies and it's fine like as long as you're being responsible it's fine so do what you want with your money anyway I literally had this sitting in my car I was like it's a green palette it's from a brand I've never tried maybe my audience would be curious about this and like they even send me like a 15% off coupon so I was about to do it and then I was like Karen no like don't do it you have xyz thing still in your pile to film with and I've mostly caught up on palettes I've gotten in PR this year but I know I still have at least five palettes just off the top of my head that I bought with my own money last year that I haven't filmed with for this channel and I have something that I'm working on doing looks for and that's happening in March so like I don't have time March is upon me like I need to get it together so yeah I, I don't have time for this so I think it's cool I think it's cool I love the color story CXC Beauty is the name of the brand and this is their out of luck palette it's got this really scary looking leprechaun on the cover so I think that helped like people were like posting about it and then it's got like a grays and greens and realistically I love greens but I don't know that I would ever reach for all those gray tone shadows so it's $59 and I did decide to pass on it. So that was a long story for me to tell you guys that I didn't buy it and you should be proud of me. Okay, so I don't know what kind of tax bracket everybody in my audience is in, but this brand voicemails and like all brands that sell bougie candles, like it's never gonna happen. I'm never, I'm never gonna spend $56 on a candle. I'm just not gonna do it. I like candles. I used to light them all the time in my old house. I had a weird problem with like soot in this house for some reason. I bought some of the Forever Mood candles and it was a hot mess. So I will never light a candle in this house again, but I just would never spend that kind of money on a candle. So you guys will have to let me know if you're like that too or if you like bougie candles. I know there's even more expensive candles than this one but this is basically a collab with Casey Musgraves and Boy Smells. It is, what is this candle even called? Uh, Deeper Well. It's an airy but grounded sky and dirt, foreign but home, the Divine Feminine, the Peaceful Masculine, 
an examination of what you make room for, what fills your soul, a hug from someone you missed. It's the growing roots in your garden, a symbol of your rootless reaching for something better. Coconut and beeswax blend with braided coconut wick in matte gradient glass tumbler with a metallic gold and white text. The top notes are saffron, eucalyptus, raspberry, beetroot. Middle notes are lavender, clary sage, mushroom, salt and amber. Base notes are oak moss, patchouli, and agar, agar wood, I think is how you say that. So it sounds wonderful. It looks very earthy. I kind of love the description that it smells like dirt, but it's gonna be a pass for me. But I'm gonna go ahead and slide on back to my spot so we can roast more launches from February. Okay, the next thing I'm anti-hauling are these new launches from Dior. So we have a few things. They launched the Dior Forever Glow Star Filter, which is a liquid highlighting concentrate, complexion enhancing fluid, which is a multi-use product. We also have the Dior Forever Glow Maximizer, which is a liquid highlighter. I believe they had also launch some new foundations. I don't know, there was a lot of Dior launches and I was very confused, but I feel like this is the classic Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, except it's Dior Spin on it, so I really wasn't interested in it at all. We also have from Lisa Aldridge, she launched a new eyeliner and a mascara called Kitten Eyes, I believe. So there's the Kitten Flick Liquid Eyeliner and the Kitten Lash Mascara. $32 for an eyeliner, $36 for a mascara. I mean, I know Lisa Aldridge makes very, very high quality products, but I just could not consent to paying that price tag, so I did go ahead and skip it. You guys know I love a Juvia's Place, and they launched some new products in February as well. We have the I Am Magic Glow Radiance Booster and the Ready Set Sealed Setting Spray. I'm actually wearing the setting spray now. It's $18. I could not say no to trying a Juvia's Place setting spray. So far I've really enjoyed it but I did pass on the Radiance Booster because again every brand and their grandmother is coming out with a liquid highlighter type product. I love the packaging of this. I love that they have so many shades. I love Juvia's Place but I just don't need this type of product. I'm not into the glowy makeup so it was an easy skip for me. Next we have from House Labs, they launched the PHD Hybrid Lip Glaze. It's a skincare infused lip plumping glaze, which is burn free. So it's got the hydration of a lip oil, a cushion of a balm, a volumizing effect of a plumper, and the high shine of a gloss. So this sounds beautiful. There's six shades, $26 each. I really, really love the colors that they chose but I am on a lipstick low buy, a loose lipstick low buy, so anytime I can say no to something, I will. This is another thing I turned down. It is a lipstick launch. These are the signature lip weight matte lipsticks from Merit Cosmetics. So it is a lightweight soft matte lipstick that has non-drying formula for buildable color that feels like nothing on the lips. So that sounds wonderful. Again, beautiful shades. I just don't need another lipstick. I already am eyeing like 20 of them that are launching in March. So I have to say no whenever I can. We also didn't get a chance to talk about this bold collection by Dolce & Gabbana, but there is a I Dare You multi-finish eye and cheek palette for $89, it's 12 shades with different finishes, encased in a chic black and gold monogram packaging, inspired by the Dolce & Gabbana logo bag, with a detachable chain mirror and double-ended brush applicator. Do you like earn cool points if you have this attached? I guess it's kind of nice because it's like having merch and a makeup item, which I've talked about this before on my channel where I will buy something from a luxury brand because I can't afford to actually buy a designer bag or a designer piece of clothing or a designer shoe. So I'm happy to be able to buy a makeup item and I feel like this is quintessentially that. I do love that it has the functionality of a keychain. So maybe if you pan the palette, you can use it for that. And there's also a waterproof eyeliner. 
So that's $29. I think it's not horrible. I, I don't see myself buying it, but you know, whatever. Okay, here's something that I have held strong on for this long. I feel like I might snap during the Sephora sale, but we'll see. So you guys know I usually buy every shade of blush that Patrick Ta comes out with because I think they're so beautiful. But they just launched these Double Take Cream and Powder Blush Duos in Just Enough, which is a soft pink. Not Too Much, which is a soft dusty beige. And then She's the Moment, which is a soft peachy salmon shade. I can say no to the first two, but the last one is so interesting to me, especially with the color of the year being a soft peach. I feel like I'm shocked that more brands haven't hopped on the soft peach train. I feel like I want to see indie brands make a soft peach highlighter. Like, I think that would be so stunning for tan girls. So why hasn't anybody made that? Like, I'm ready for it. I know they were kind of popular a few years ago. I'm thinking, like, Give Me Glow had one that was, like, a peachy. Oh, so beautiful. I have it still. Anyway, all of that aside... The Siren Call of these blushes and also the Major Volume Rich Plumping Lip Gloss, the shade Toffee, the shade Obliviously, and Mine. Oh my gosh. And I actually do like his Rich Plumping Lip Glosses. I have this one in the shade Superficial. So I pulled this out thinking like, okay, if I try that one, then it would remind me like I don't need every single color. So yeah, I'm trying to hold strong, but... Man, she's the moment. It might get me. I want to go to my Sephora and see it in person because I'm still kind of like, maybe it's too light for me, but whew, it's so beautiful. Okay, next we have from Morphe. They launched the Light Form Extended Hydration Foundation, a weightless second skin foundation that's clinically proven to improve skin's natural radiance, hydration, and barrier function in just one week. This is $20, 36 shades, and yeah, it's a natural radiant finish, really not into a radiant foundation at the moment, so I guess that that was an easy skip for me. Also, I bought a ton of foundation in January, so I need foundation like I need a hole in my head. Next, this was also an easy skip. We have the collaboration between Marc Jacobs and Pat McGrath celebrating 40 years of Marc Jacobs. I think this bullet packaging is gorgeous. It looks very bougie. It looks very chic. I love the red in there. Definitely a beautiful collector's item, but I don't really wear a lot of red lipstick, so it doesn't make any sense for me to have this. Okay, I feel like 2023 was the year that everybody launched a color corrector, and now Kali Ray is jumping on the bandwagon. So this is their Hideaway Brightening and Hydrating Under Eye Color Corrector. A clean, long-lasting, lightweight, serum-like color corrector. I have two color correctors that I love. I have the Huda one, and I have the one from Sigma. That's all I really need, so I won't be picking that up. It's an easy skip for me. We also have from Nabla, they launched the Forget Me Not little quad. It has new shades of glitter and eyeshadow in mattes and metallic finishes. I feel like I haven't really been interested in anything from Nabla in a long time, and I'm totally okay with that. I believe they are an Italian brand, and they used to have quite the choke hold on me. I do have a lot of palettes from them that are in my declutter pile, so yeah, I'm happy that I've kind of moved on from them. Nothing wrong with the brand. I think they make some cute stuff, but nothing has had a huge impact on me this last couple of years. We have from Pat McGrath, I feel like this is obviously an anti-haul. This is the Mothership 8 Divine Rose Heart's Desire Edition. So basically it's a palette that already exists in special packaging, which I totally get. She does this from time to time, but at this point I just don't care. I'm not going to get rid of the palette I already have just so I can have it in gold packaging. So it's just pretty disappointing how we haven't seen something unique come from Pat McGrath's brand in a while. I think I saw that she doesn't own her brand anymore. I'm not surprised, but like, is that an excuse? Like, I don't know. What do you guys think? Okay, next we have the LYS Cream Glow Blush Sticks. These look so beautiful and LYS is a black owned brand. I did just pull out their bronzer stick and I was trying it and it was a little bit hard to like blend so I'm like maybe maybe I don't need the blush sticks 
but I do have a shade or two that I'm eyeing that I might throw in my card during the Sephora sale, but I'm trying to be picky because I do have a lot of like cream and liquid blushes, so anytime I can pass on one, I'm more than happy to do so. We also have these gorgeous blushes from Guerlain. So these are the new terracotta blushes, and I think they're like 50 bucks. So we have a light pink, a deep coral, a light coral, a deep nude, a light nude, and a deep pink. So these are stunning. I just don't wanna spend $50 on a blush from a brand that I'm mildly interested in. Okay, so next we have this birthday cake lip butter balm from Summer Fridays. It's a lip butter balm uh, for hydration and shine. So this is like what the girlies, the 10 year old girlies at Sephora are like clamoring for. They're like spending all of their time earning their allowance. Just kidding, no, they're just asking their parents for their credit cards because of course, like we just want our kids to be happy. We just want them to have everything and not get bullied for not being cool. So I totally get it. It's scary out there. So this is the Butter Bomb and I have tried, you guys, I have tried to love Summer Fridays. I'm sure they're great. I'm sure they work for everybody else, but I just don't like their products. Like I don't like these lip balms. I don't think they're hydrating enough. I didn't really think their jet lag mask was that amazing. Like everybody would act like it was gonna give you a new face. I tried their lip oils in January and I swear it just made my lips feel even drier. So yeah, I would not advise any Summer Fridays purchases. I think they sent this one out in PR, so I did see a few people use it, and I'm sure they loved it, but it's just overhyped for me, in my opinion. These, I think, would be so fun, and now that I'm like a no makeup makeup girly on the weekends, I want to try one, but I know I'm not gonna get use out of this, and I can just use any other blush in my collection. So these are from Nude Sticks and these are the Nude Screen Blush Tints. So they're a multi-purpose product that you can use on your eyes, lips, cheeks, and they also are gonna prevent you from getting UV damage. So yeah, I just think these are so beautiful, but it is a easy skip for me. Okay, this I wanted. There's two launches that I really wanted in February and I was like, having these tough conversations with myself. It's so hard, right? Because essentially I feel like I want everything and then I try to narrow things down. And now I sit here and I'm filming this video and I'm like, but why did you pick that over that? Like, what made you think that you should spend your money on the Juvia's Place liquid blushes, but you were too good to spend your money on like the nude stick blushes? I don't know, maybe it's like a brand preference. But I was thinking the other day too, it's like, I don't even think I buy every single launch from any brand anymore. I feel like for a while, maybe I did from Pat McGrath and like ColourPop back in the day, but I feel like we don't shop like that anymore. Or maybe it's just me, I don't know. But I love hearing what you guys think, so let me know down below. Anyways, so REM, I had kind of roasted. I was like, mm, Ariana Grande be like, you know, sleeping with married guys what's up with that like don't know that we love that for her actually she was married too so i think they both cheated on their spot anyway listen i'm not here to debate morality but let's go ahead more 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 ta no morality ethics yes not mortality that's death okay so anyway we've got new face products from Ariane beauty there's the satin matte blushes and the satin matte bronzers I feel like the blushes were beautiful. I didn't really want any of them except like the coral shade and then I was like, Karen, you have so many coral blushes. Like you don't actually need that. And then the bronzers looked interesting but they look a little bit too cool tone for me. So in the end I did end up skipping it and I don't know, every once in a while I think about it and now I'm like, you know, the time has passed. I don't need to like review it for YouTube so why even buy it? So I did skip on that. This though, I did have a hard time. I definitely thought I was gonna buy one of the new Good Apple blushes and bronzers, but I ended up skipping it too because in the blush shades, like I wanted like the medium shade, but I just don't like the shades. Like I really like the light colors, but then they just look so light. They were probably fine. Like I could have probably made those shades work, but then I just like talk myself out of it. And then I don't really need a contour. So then I talk myself out of the bronzer. So in the end, I did save myself a bunch of money, which I'm happy about. And 
yeah, it wasn't an easy skip. I definitely thought a lot about it. And in the end, I just decided it wasn't for me. Okay, so Melt also launched the... I guess this isn't really new. I was going to say new, but I think they bought back something that they kind of redid. So these are their petite stacks. We've got the warm brown and the neutral brown. And oh, okay, so the warm brown I think is new. And then the neutral browns was a restock. And I mean, I feel like they could have just made this like a six pan eyeshadow palette. Like I, I don't know that we needed these like petite stacks and they're made out of cardboard, which is great for the environment and stuff. But I don't know, like how is transporting one of those, like, is it easier to break them or is it less easy to break them? I'm not sure. I know I have one stack that's in my declutter pile and my declutter pile is quite large. So it had kind of like come apart. Luckily, none of the eyeshadows were damaged, but I was like, mm, that's kind of something I never thought about before. Like if you have it in a makeup bag and it's like jiggling around. So I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like, mm, I don't know where Melt's going. It seems like they don't have much of a direction. And then they also launched some beautiful gel liners. But overall, it was an easy skip for me. Okay, let's real quick talk about this. So this is the Cheek Clapper 3D Blush Trio from Patrick Star. So one size. And I think these are super popular. They came out with this bright pink one. And I think it's super cool. I feel like Patrick Star is really known for his drag type makeup so the products are very pigmented and I think that that totally makes sense and I love that because we need more options like that in Sephora's. I just realized that I had bought the one size setting spray and I've never tried it like where did I put that thing? Oh my gosh wow Okay, well that was dumb of me. I need to dig that out because I paid good money for it. Okay, so moving on. They're very pigmented and I hate pink blush, so it's an easy skip for me. This one I hummed and I hawed and I did buy it and it sold out in like five seconds and I think they're not bringing it back. So this is the Strawberry Letter Fragrance from Fleur. It's the alluring, addictive, and undeniably sexy crispy fruit gourmand that opens with playful juiciness and then transitions with unexpected chic decadence. So it's classic leaves, strawberry, plum, nectar are the top notes. We've got wild lily, red poppy, and apple blossom at the heart. And then the base notes are earthy woods, tonka bean, and sugared amber. So honestly, it sounds beautiful, but I have so many fragrances and I just was having such a hard time like deciding if I wanted to buy it without smelling it because it wasn't available at Sephora so I wouldn't be able to return it and so I decided to pass and now I will never know the smell of strawberry letters from Fleur. Okay last but certainly not least I don't think there's anything else I really want to cover except for this launch from Glamlight and this was their Valentine's collection and you guys know I usually buy all things Glamlight, big fan of the brand, really really enjoy them, love the stuff they've been doing recently. So for Valentine's Day this year they went with a Betty Boop collection and I think this is so cute. There's a beautiful palette, mascara, lip kit, blush duo, mirror, lashes, and a bag and I just Really, really was debating whether to get this, whether to not get it. And ultimately, I had kind of looked at my Glam Light collection, thought to myself, I have a lot of these shades. I think still there's something special about the palette, and I could potentially see myself buying it in the future on sale. But I just feel like it's so too late for a review now for YouTube. And if I was buying it, I'd be buying it for personal reasons and my collection purposes. But I just don't need to do that at this time. I'm still trying to save for a trip that I'm taking in April, so next month. And oh my gosh, that trip is a month away. That's wild. And I'm trying not to create too much kind of repetition in my makeup collection. So trying really hard. It was kind of hard for me to pass on it. But looking back now, I'm okay. I'm fine. Like I'm not passing out because I don't have 
this collection. I did see some of my friends review this and they said it was beautiful. So I do think that there are some beautiful like duochrome shades in the palette especially that make this unique from other Glam Light palettes with a similar color story. But overall, I just want to report that even though I didn't buy the makeup, I survived and you will too. If you're on a low buy, if you're on a no buy, honestly, probably the best thing to do is staying off social media because Social media will get you, and if one of my favorites tells me they love something, I usually don't think twice because I trust them so much. So, But I just wanted to share that I did pass on this collection from one of my favorite indie brands. Okay, friends, that is it for my February anti-haul. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, just want to remind you, I do have a anti-haul playlist. I also have playlists for each year, so if you want to head on over to 2022 and see what products I didn't buy in that year. You can do that as well. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. As always, in the comments, let us know what product did you skip in February. I love chatting to you guys, and I will see you in another video very, very soon. Bye, friends.